When I started out in the world of finance in the late 1990s, the dot-com boom was in full swing and there were some hints that the world of finance had gotten a bit dumb. Stuart, can I see you in my office, please? That kid is sick. That hint is squeaky. He's very sick. Stuart, get in here. Sure thing, Mr. P. Stuart, I just opened my Ameritrade account. Let's light this candle. This morning, I opened the Financial Times to see this story. A digital token named after Elon Musk's dog has launched a major advertising campaign on London's public transport system, funded by a tax on new buyers. These adverts are supposed to drum up enthusiasm around flocky Enu coin. The article goes on to say, the branding campaign aims to legitimise the coin and increase confidence of the average consumer. The group's head of marketing, who identified himself by the alias Sabre, said, you get a lot of scam artists in this game. Yeah, so that's what's going on in the world of finance right now. A man using the alias Sabre, a name most likely stolen from a comic book villain, is warning us against scam artists while pitching his Elon Musk dog-themed currency. He's been quoted in the Financial Times, a serious newspaper. The article continues, Flocky Enu can splash out on pricey advertising because, like some other meme coins, it imposes a marketing fee of 4% on buyers. That fee is used for onboarding influencers and to further develop and grow the Flocky ecosystem. I guess at least they're onboarding influencers. If there's one thing that can be counted upon to legitimise a new form of money, it's YouTubers and Instagrammers, because after all, this is finance in 2021. You know, this used to be a smart industry, though. Where has my emotional support dog gone? Here he is. The article goes on to discuss whether the FCA or the SEC should get involved. I mean, maybe they should, but you, you have to imagine that there are some adults that work at these financial regulators and they, they possibly took these jobs with the high-minded goal of protecting good people from being ripped off by financial scammers. And then they have to take phone calls from people who claim to have worked hard to earn money and prudently invested it in Elon Musk dog-themed magic beans, and they're now upset to have lost it all. Wait, no, I'm sorry. The article says that the new dog money made up by Sabre is up 1,600% in the last month, so I guess they don't have to field those phone calls. The article goes on to quote a lawyer who says, These ads are colourful. They have emojis. They're targeting, or could target, a quite different market than traditional investments. Now, this woman went to law school got a job at a top-ranked law firm, and when she finally was quoted in a serious newspaper, these are the questions that she has to answer. Later in the piece, it goes on to say that the Financial Times called Elon Musk for a comment. Now, Elon Musk is supposed to be running a company that has a market cap greater than the entire automobile industry combined. A journalist from a, a serious newspaper called him up to comment on this. OK, so what else is in the news? Well, there's a story about a girl named Eva Balin, whose job apparently involves democratising the data economy and blockchain API access. And apparently she tweeted a meme called Love in the Time of Web 3. I can't tell you how dumb I feel reading this out. And then I guess Elon Musk stole her meme and tweeted it unattributed. And then she went on to sell an NFT that points to it, and someone paid her $20,000 for that. You know, it really used to be a smart industry. The Bloomberg journalist Matt Levine has put forth probably the best explanation of how markets work today, a theory that's likely to make it onto university curriculum sometime soon. He calls it the Elon Markets hypothesis, and his theory is that the best thing a public company can do today from a corporate finance perspective is to have Elon Musk tweet something positive about it. 
This is because the way finance works in 2021 is that things are valuable not based on their cash flows, but on their proximity to Elon Musk. If you pause to think about it for a second, it all makes sense. Now, companies can't actually control what Elon Musk tweets about, not even Tesla can. In fact, I'm not sure that Elon can. So Matt Levine argues that the best other thing that a company can do is to buy Dogecoin and tweet about it, or, like Hertz has done, just buy a bunch of Teslas. Look, I'm just here to tell you how finance works. I don't make up the rules. This is just it. About a year ago, I made a video about Guitar Center and their bankruptcy. Many of you are possibly wondering how a company with the meme stock potential of Guitar Center could have gone bankrupt over the last year. And of course, the reason is that they were privately owned. And this just shows you how out of touch the private equity industry is with the real world. Anyone who pays any attention to how markets actually work would have known that rather than declare bankruptcy, they should have taken the company public via SPAC merger and announced that they were only accepting Dogecoin in exchange for NFTs of guitars. They also could have accused soft jazz saxophonist Kenny G of trying to put them out of business. Look, you can say I'm being hard on the private equity guys, but let's think for a moment. Eva, the democratizing blockchain data something something girl, would have known what to do. Listen, finance in 2021 might be dumb, but it's only getting dumber. And if you're in your early 20s watching this, my advice to you is not to get left behind. You don't want to find yourself in 20 years time sitting in an office with an emotional support NFT, unable to understand the world around you. Is he on any medication? None. Doctor, I think you should see this. Oh my. Why, what is it? He's got money coming out the wazoo. What do we have? Money out the wazoo. Move this man to a private room. Out of the way, this man's got money coming out the wazoo! Does your husband have insurance? Insurance? He's got money coming out of the wazoo. Oh. I made a video a week or two ago about the biggest fat finger mistakes in finance, and it didn't really get as much traction as I expected here on YouTube. And this is probably because mistakes don't matter so much anymore. If you wanted to buy one dog themed influencer coin and you bought the wrong one by mistake, you probably just made more money than you expected to. And the SEC is not going to help you with that. If you want to watch that video to learn about how finance used to work in the dark ages, here's a link. See you later. Bye.